you know about uh, simple pendulum and the very famous formula for the time period of a simple pen pendulum is well known to every person okay in this figure you can see that uh, a bob is attached to a string of length l and uh, it is performing oscillation about the equilibrium position a okay and in that condition you know in general when it is asked to you that what is the time period of this uh, simple pendulum commonly people say that the expression for the time period for a simple pendulum is 2 pi root over l by g where you know this l is the length of the pendulum and g is acceleration due to gravity so if uh, uh, this formula is in your mind without any specification or any restriction then when it is asked to you that if l is equal to infinity or uh, more accurately you can say that if l tends to infinity then uh, what is t what is t if you will substitute this value of l equal to infinity in this expression you can see that this t will be then infinity but is it a correct answer the answer is not t equal to infinity is not correct but it is incorrect result <coughs> actually when l is equal to infinity or you can say that if length of the simple pendulum is very large in that condition the time period of oscillation of this pendulum is not infinity but uh, you will see that actually in this condition when l is infinity time period is finite and its value is 84.3 minute 84.3 minute this is actually the answer okay but uh, now we will see how uh, you can say that when l is infinity the time period of the simple pendulum is not infinity actually when you say that uh, the time period uh, the expression for time period is 2 pi root over l by g this formula is not a universal formula for the time period of a simple pendulum actually the expression for time period depends on the length compared to the radius of the earth when you say that t is equal to 2 pi root over l by g this result holds only when length of the pendulum l is much smaller than r where r is the radius of the earth so if the length of the pendulum is much smaller neg negligibly smaller with respect to the radius of the earth actually in that condition acceleration due to gravity is directed in vertical direction and in that condition the bob oscillates simple harmonically and time period is equal to 2 pi root over l by g okay but uh, here as uh, you can see we have assumed that l is equal to infinity or you can say this l is much greater than r actually when l is much greater than r then the expression for time period t equal to 2 pi root over l by g this does not hold this is not a correct expression so never think that uh, the expression for time period of a simple pendulum is always 2 pi root over l by g it depends on the length of the pendulum actually uh, you can make a calculation but here i am just writing it when length of the pendulum l is comparable to the radius of the earth in that condition you get the general expression for the time period of this simple pendulum and this expression is what you can see this expression i have written here this is 2 pi root over 1 over g times 1 by l plus 1 by r okay so now uh, consider uh, the case if uh, l is much smaller than r 
it means you are talking about a simple pendulum whose length is negligibly small in comparison to the radius of the earth if l is much smaller than r you can easily see that this 1 over l will be then much greater than 1 over r okay and therefore what will be the expression for time period in this situation you can see in this situation t will be equal to 2 pi root over 1 by g into 1 over l because this 1 by r will be neglected in comparison to 1 by r and so this expression is 2 pi root over l by g okay so this expression for time period is valid only when you are talking about a simple pendulum whose length is much smaller than radius of the earth but uh, if you consider that this uh, l is is infinity when l is infinity that means l is much greater than r actually in that condition you can see that this 1 by l will be much smaller than 1 by r okay and so in this expression a for time period we will neglect this 1 by l in comparison to 1 by r and therefore what will be the expression the expression will be t equal to 2 pi root over 1 by g into <coughs> g into 1 by r because 1 by l can be neglected and this expression becomes 2 pi root over r by g so this is the expression for time period of a simple pendulum having infinite length and here you can see that this r and g both are universal constants and so when you will substitute the value of radius of the earth r which is 6400 kilometer and the value of g which is 9.8 meter per second square and simplify you will get that this time period comes out 5060 second that is this is 84.3 minutes so this is the time period of a simple pendulum of infinite length its time period is not infinity this is just a surprising result actually the same time period of the oscillatory motion of a particle or a male is found when the particle executes the oscillatory motion through a tunnel uh, through the center of the earth you can see this figure this sphere actually represents the uh, sphere uh, it represents uh, the earth uh, which is assumed to be a solid sphere of radius r and uh, let us assume that a, a tunnel is dug through the center of this uh, earth and a particle of mass in m is released from one of the ends of this tunnel then you will see that actually this particle of mass m uh, performs simple harmonic motion about the center of the earth you can easily uh, check it how the, you can say that this motion is simple harmonic if uh, you consider that at any moment t the particle is at a distance x from the center of the earth then uh, the force acting on this particle due to the earth will be what you know that if E is the gravitational field produced at uh, this distance x which is uh, which, uh, where actually x is less than r, r is the radius of the earth, then uh, the gravitational force uh, acted upon this particle of mass m will be f equal to m e. But you know that uh, this gravitational field this is equal to minus gm into x divided by r q because this point is inside the inside a solid sphere of radius r and mass m here this capital m is the mass of the earth 
so if you will write the equation of motion of this particle what will be that you know this equation of motion will be m d2 x by dt square equal to the, this force this is minus g m m by r cube into x now this m and m will cancel out and uh, your equation of motion becomes d2 x by dt square plus g m by r cube into x and uh, if you will compare this equation with the standard equation of a simple harmonic motion you know the standard equation is d2x by dt square plus omega square x equal to 0. So comparing these two equations you can see that the, that the angular frequency of the motion of this particle omega is given by a square root of gm by r2. But if the time period of this oscillatory motion is uh, t actually then you can see that uh, omega will be 2 pi by t and this is equal to uh, gm by r cube square root. But you know that this gm is equal to gr square which is <coughs> when the particle is at the surface of the earth. Okay? gm is equal to gr square. So this uh, gm has been replaced by gr square and now this r square and this r cube will cancel out and your result will be root over g by r. And so from here you can see that this t is equal to 2 pi root over r by g. And you can see this result is exactly same as that of this result. And so in this condition too, the time period of oscillation of the particle about the center of the earth is also equal to 84.3 minute 84.3 minute you will see now we will see a third situation when we have the same time period of the circular motion of a satellite let us consider a satellite of mass m revolving around the earth in a, a circular orbit of radius this is small r but this orbit of the satellite is very close to the surface of the earth we assume that if uh, this uh, satellite is at a height h from the earth's surface then actually this h is much uh, smaller than the radius of the earth and that's why the orbit uh, radius of the orbit which, which will be actually r plus h where r is the radius of the earth that will be almost equal to r because the satellite is very close to the surface of the earth so we consider a satellite of mass m revolving in a circular orbit almost equal to radius of the earth with a constant speed v now let us try to find what will be the period of revolution of this satellite you will surprisingly get the same result that is its time period will be also 84.3 million okay you know if v is the speed of this satellite the time period will be what this will be 2 pi r by v because 2 pi r will be the distance covered by the satellite in one revolution and v is its, its speed but r is equal to r plus h but as you have assumed that this h is much smaller than capital r so this is 2 pi r by v this is time period now we will find the speed v of this satellite for this write the equation of motion as the satellite is in circular motion so this equation of motion will be mb square by r equal to g mm by r square okay and from here you can see that this v is equal to g m by r whole to the power half r square root this is actually also called orbital velocity okay but this small r is almost equal to capital r where, where r is the radius of the earth and you have seen that this gm is equal to gr square and so uh, one of the r will cancel out and v is equal to root over gr and when you will substitute this value of v in the expression for t what will be your result t will be 2 pi r over root over g by r and so here uh, we get t equal to 2 pi root over r by g. So you can see that all in these three cases, that is in case of a simple pendulum of infinite length, in case of 
the oscillatory motion of a particle about the center of the earth <coughs> in a tunnel dug through the center of the earth and uh, the time period of a satellite moving in circular orbit very close to the surface of the earth in all these three cases time period is not infinity but it has a finite value which is equal to 84.3 minute 84.3 minute okay i think you have definitely enjoyed this lecture thank you very much